Chapter 6 For a Rainy Day What do you mean he's dying? Aizawa couldn't help the anger he felt as Tsukauchi told him about the newly acquired information. Aizawa, you need to calm down. You're still healing. The nurses glared at me enough when I asked to see you. The detective muttered softly, slowly helping the man back down onto the hospital bed. It has been two days since the incident. The doctors were baffled by Aizawa's survival. They informed him that if he'd been brought in just a few seconds later, he'd be dead. Sting's venom was known to be highly lethal. Shadow had saved his life. How can he be dying? A dying man wouldn't have the energy or power to do what he does every day. Aizawa asked again, his voice quieter now. Solemn. He just couldn't believe it, didn't want to. Yes, the vigilante was a pain in the ass. The boy was a problem child. Yet, that's all he was in the end. A child. He didn't deserve this. The EMT that spoke to me has a quirk that allows her to see a person's health status. All the information she was able to provide was that the kid was dying. She explained it as though it would take a couple of years, but he was indeed dying. Do you... Aizawa paused, mulling the question in his mind a little bit. Do you think that's why he's a vigilante? That was the question, wasn't it? The fact that this kid, this dying kid, put his life on the line every day to save others. I guess we will have to ask him ourselves. Aizawa nodded. The detective was right. This wasn't something they could guess. This kid seemed more of a mystery to them every day. Every time he thinks he's starting to figure the kid out, something comes up and he finds himself digging deeper. Just, what the hell has this kid been through? Whatever was going to happen next, Aizawa needed to find a way to thank the problem chilled. He wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him, after all. Izuku thanked whatever genius created the speaking option on his phone as he scrolled through his newsfeed. He was oddly surprised at how many times his name had been mentioned in the past few months. When he first started out as a vigilante, the public was in an uproar. People feared and mistrusted him. However, as time went by, the people had grown to rely on him. He was surprised at the amount of support he got from the public. People put their faith in the vigilante, put their faith in him to be there when they needed him, to save them. As time went by, cries of help, of random pleads were turning into shouts of his name, shouts for him to come. Somehow, they knew that he would hear them, and that he'd try his damn best to be there. It warmed his heart every time someone called him their hero. He knew he was far from a true hero. He was an outlaw, a criminal. The government saw him as nothing more than a mere villain. Yet, it was all worth it. The feeling he gets every time he saved someone. His mother sacrificed herself for him that night. He was going to make damn sure that it wasn't for nothing. He hoped that wherever she was now, that she was looking over him, a proud smile on her face. Probably a worried one too, yet a proud one nonetheless. It saddened him, the way the memories were close to fading away permanently. He couldn't remember his mother's voice, yet he could remember her smile perfectly. It was one of the only things he remembered from the world. From the days before his world was completely plunged into darkness. He didn't mean to space out again. It felt like life wasn't on his side these days. When was it ever anyways? He sighed as he realized that he had probably taken a wrong turn on his way to work. Asking for quick direction from passerbys, he walked towards the coffee shop, hoping that today wouldn't be a busy day. Life can never let him catch a break. Can it? He huffed dramatically as he tried to sneak into one of the bathroom stalls, trying his hardest not to bring the villain's attention towards him. It was a relatively slow day. He was preparing Shinsu's usual coffee when the front door burst open. A masked villain rushing into the shop and taking the first person, he laid his ease on as a hostage. It just had to be Shinsu, didn't it? Why was this his life? Quietly backing away from the counter, he did his best to run into the bathroom and change into his costume. He tried to ignore the pang of guilt he felt at leaving the customers and Shinsu alone with the guy. He needed to suit up, though. Izuku was glad that he always brought it with him. You never know when a psychopath was going to take your friend as a hostage, right? Yeah, this was totally normal. Making quick work of changing, he quietly made his way back. Taking a peek around the corner, 
he assessed the situation before him. The robber had one of his hands over Shinsu's mouth as his other hand held a gun to Shinsu's head. There goes Shinsu's chance of using his quirk, Izuku thought bitterly. Sirens could be heard outside. The police were surely chasing the guy when the bastard decided that adding armed hostage-taking to his sentence was rational. Izuku took his time to scan the guy's figure. The man's posture was stiff, clearly on high alert and desperate. Fighting him now was going to be tricky. A cornered man was a dangerous one. Izuku could probably take the guy out fast, but Shinsu's life was on the line and he wasn't going to rush in without thinking it through. Izuku swallowed down his anxiety at the thought of his friend's situation. The guy before him didn't seem to have any physical quirk. If his choice of weapon and lack of mutation was any indication, the guy probably had some kind of mental or passive ability. His questions were answered when the door of the store seemed to rattle slightly, only to swing open a couple of seconds later. So, some kind of telekinesis? It seemed like the guy was getting ready to take off. Having acquired a hostage, all he needed to do was walk out. All Izuku needed to do was wait for the right moment and ambush him. However, Shinzu appeared to have a death wish as he suddenly kicked the guy's knee. The villain howled in pain as he cursed loudly, panic and anger overriding his features as he aimed the gun at Shinzu. Izuku could practically feel the moment Shinzu realized his mistake. Before he could think better of it, his feet were moving. Quickly dashing towards the pair, he tackled the villain to the ground, not even noticing the sound of the gun as it went off, too busy pinning the villain down and restraining him to see the look of horror that was etched on Shinso's face. Not that he could see it anyway. Getting back up to his feet and admiring his work. The villain was strangely easy to take down. Yet, he couldn't help but feel like he was forgetting something. Are... are you okay? Came a hesitant yet familiar voice from behind him. Izuku turned around to face him, his action eliciting a gasp from the teen in front of him. He chose to ignore it. Am I okay? Shouldn't I be asking you that? He countered cheekily, vaguely aware of the stinging pain he was feeling in his shoulder. You, you're bleeding. The panic and worry in Shinsu's voice was evident. Bleeding? He patted himself off, only stopping when his hand came in contact with his shoulder. He hissed as a new wave of pain hit him. Now that the adrenaline from the fight was wearing off, he could feel it. So, that's where the gun went off. He got himself shot. Do not worry, troubled citizen! He exclaimed loudly, voice too high to be natural, as he tried to ignore the now searing pain emitting from his wound. I will be off now. He quickly ducked out of the shop, winking at the detective as he bolted to an alley and scaled the building hoping that today wouldn't be the day he would bleed to death. Thankfully, the bullet had gone through and out. Nothing some gauze and wrapping wouldn't fix. He'll feel it for the next few weeks, though. Shinsu didn't know what to think about his savior. Shadow was a mystery to everyone. The man was famous for his accomplishments and saves. Some even call him a hero. They talk about exploits and skills, the way he always shows up. Shinsu has been following the man's activities for a while now. He'd come to admire the vigilante's actions. The man always helped when he could and never asked for anything in return. No fame, no fortune. He was chased by the whole police department and countless heroes constantly, viewed by the government as a menace and a criminal. Yet the man, boy, from the vaguely familiar voice he heard today, kept going out there and kept trying to save people. Today, he saw it firsthand the way Shadow practically threw himself in the line of fire. Literally, in this case, just to save a random guy from getting shot. Just to save him. However, this didn't mean that Shinsu supported vigilantism. Logically, if every person who wanted to help decided to randomly go out there and put themselves in danger, the world would resolve to chaos. The law against public quirk usage was there for a reason, and a good reason at that. He hopes that Shadow wasn't hurt too badly. It was concerning to see the man bleed from a gunshot wound and not even notice it. Shadow spoke to him today, albeit, it was a short conversation. The boy's voice sounded so familiar to him, it made him wonder if he had met the man before. He didn't think much of it, though, because what were the odds of actually knowing the man behind the mask? It wasn't until the next morning that he found out just how probable those chants really was. 
He couldn't help but gape at the bloodstain that was currently spreading on Midoriya's shoulder as he poured Shinsu's usual cup of coffee. He kept a close eye on his friend that day. Watch the way the boy would wince every time he lifted his hand too much or held something particularly heavy. His mind was quick to form conspiracy theories, each one having a perfectly logical explanation for Midoriya being injured on the exact place Shadow was shot. Yet nothing seemed to really explain why. Izuku couldn't be Shadow, right? The kid was blind for God's sake. How could he possibly be the roof-jumping, crime-fighting, ass-kicking badass that went out every night? He decided to let it go for now. He was running on one cup of coffee after a particularly bad all-nighter. His insomnia just made him paranoid. Yeah, that was it. This, however, did not prevent him from keeping a close eye on Izuku for the next few weeks. It only now occurred to him how much he wasn't noticing before. He'd see the way Midoriya's movement somehow always seemed strained. The days when he'd come with a slight limp or a bruised face. Covering multiple gashes and injuries with long sleeves and his usual worn-out black hoodie. Every time he would ask the teen, Izuku would shrug and make up some sort of lame excuse. Things like, I fell down the stairs or I tripped. This was coming from the kid that seemed to see better than Shinsu himself, despite being blind. He also realized how he knew little to absolutely nothing about the green-haired barista. The boy in question never talked about his own private life. It made Shinsu feel like their friendship was really one-sided. He had poured his heart out to the boy not long after meeting him. Curiosity got the best of him three weeks later when he saw Midoriya leave for the end of his shift. As quietly as he could, he followed the greenette out of the store and down a couple of alleys. However, he wasn't as stealthy as he hoped he was. If the way Midoriya suddenly stopped and turned around to face him was any indication. So, can I at least ask why you're following me? Shinsu could only stand there, shocked and speechless as the greenette continued. Shinsu... How do you do that? He asked before he could stop himself. Do what? Izuku seemed genuinely confused. Do this, all of this. How could you possibly know that it was me? Or that anyone was following you? Izuku was quiet for a moment, a thoughtful expression flashing over his features as he seemed to decide on something. Well, it's my quirk. He finally said, making Shinso freeze in place. Because yeah? Why didn't he think of this before? He never asked to know Midoriya's quirk after all. Your quirk? Shinsu repeated dumbly. What is it, actually? Well, it allows me to kind of feel things around me. I guess I can't really describe it. I'm blind, but my senses kind of work better than normal people. I can hear and smell better, stuff like that. The boy replied simply. Oh, I, I can also see the sound waves that resound from things. That way I can make out the outlines of the world around me. Oh. This made so much sense now. But he still had questions. One, in particular, that has been eating at him for a while now. Shinsu debated if he should use his quirk or not, but thought better of it. If he was going to get answers, he would do it by getting Midoriya to tell him willingly. Before he could even ask his question, Midoriya spoke. Do you trust me? The question was surprising, to say the least. Shinsu didn't expect the teen to be the one asking such a question. Izuku noticed the way Shinsu's eyes were always on him for the past few weeks, always following his movements and looking at him closely. At first, Izuku panicked at the idea of Shinsu suspecting him. However, after a while, he decided that it wouldn't be so bad. This, however, didn't mean that he was going to tell him straight away. If he could save his friend the trouble and burden of knowing, he would. I... I do. Well, if you really do, trust me when I tell you not to ask many questions. My past and future aren't something that'll be fun getting to know. What are you... I know you figured it out. You're smarter than that. But this isn't something you should get yourself into. My life is... complicated. Shinsu, for the life of him, didn't understand Midoriya. That's the thing, isn't it? I trust you, Midoriya. But you... you don't trust me. He paused, frustration and anger welling up inside of him. I've poured my heart out to you. I've trusted you with my past and my troubles. Yet, 
You don't trust me. I know absolutely nothing about you, and we've been friends for months. Shinsu, you don't understand. Then tell me. Make me understand Midoriya. He yelled, his emotions getting the better of him. Shinsu. You're Shadow, aren't you? You saved me at the shop that day. You've been saving so many people. So, why? Why are you doing this? I can't... No, it's not right. It's not right for you or for me. You should stay away from me, Shinsu. Trust me. Just, just stay away. What are you talking about? You were my first friend. The first person to ever look at me and see more than just a villain. How do you expect me to just walk away? Because it's too hard, okay? It's... The smaller boy's breath hitched as he failed to compose himself. What's hard? Explain to me, Midoriya. Midoriya removed his glasses, his milky emerald eyes looking straight at Shinsu, seemingly staring right through him. He could see the way the boy seemed to compose himself, his demeanor doing a 180, his emotions disappearing from his features and leaving a blank expression in its steed. Use your quirk on me, Hitoshi. The uses of his first name only served to make the request that much more serious. M my quirk? Why? Just do it. Ask me whatever you want. His voice was devoid of any emotion. It felt like he was talking to a puppet. Uh, are you sure? He couldn't help but ask. Yes. Just like that, he watched as Izuku's eyes glazed over, giving his already blank stare an even emptier look. Hesitantly, he asked his first question. Are you Shadow? The nod he got in response only confirmed what he had already asked, so he tried another question. Why did you become a vigilante? Heroes don't always save the day and I didn't have a choice. The answer was short and simple. Yet, it opened up too many other questions. What do you mean? Why don't you have a choice? He feared the answer. He was going to get. I'm dying! These two words left the vigilante's lips, and Shinsu felt like he was being hit by a truck. The shock big enough to make him lose his hold on the other teen. The latter seemed just as distressed at having revealed his reasons for being a vigilante. What... what do you mean you're dying? He felt dampness spread on his cheek and chose to ignore it. I'm sorry that you had to find out this way. I'm sorry for letting you get too close, it's all my fault. Izuku seemed so small at that moment, as if one mere touch would crumble the world around him. The doctor says I have four years left. Give or take a few. He laughed quietly. The sound was so wrong, so broken. Now you know why you should stay away. Shinsu looked at Midoriya and felt like the biggest asshole in history. He watched as Izuku quietly walked away, passing him by without another word. His body moved before his mind could even register the action, making him grab Izuku's arm before the boy could walk away. You're an idiot if you think that I'm letting you walk away. Shinsu, I'm like, like a, a, a bomb. And if you get too close... The boy put on his tinted glasses again. I'd like to keep the casualties as minimum as possible. His voice was unwavering, his demeanor changing back to the emptiness from earlier. Shinsu didn't relent when the greenette tried to remove himself from his hold. If you think distancing yourself from me is going to lessen the pain I'll feel, then you can't be any more wrong. Shinsu, don't... Listen to me, Izuku. It was his turn now to use the first name card. If the way the boy stilled was of any indication, it worked. You are part of my life. You've been for a while now. It's only fair that I'd be a part of your life, too. I, I don't want to hurt you. Izuku's voice was so small. It spoke of years of doubt and fear. Then don't push me away. They looked at each other for a few seconds. Izuku seemed, for the first time, to be really considering him. Shinsu watched as the greenette's eyes lit up ever so slightly before a soft, okay, was uttered. 